Hey guys, before the video begins, I would like to make a very important announcement in regards to a new channel made by a friend of mine, Kelly Productions. He has created a new channel named The Watch. It's a channel dedicated to making superhero films and miniseries of a new universe that has been created and named The Watch. And the first film is out right now. If you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on this very channel, you know I've spoken about a film that's been involved that I've been involved with. Well, this is it. The Midnight Warden. I'd highly appreciate it if you guys subscribed to this channel, liked the video, turned on notifications, and shared this film with your friends so we can make more films in the future. The more awareness of our films, the more we can make. You can find a link to the channel in the description below of this video, or click on my channel and go to the section channels, and it will be there as we speak. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy today's video. What is going on, buddy? My name is Zellprint, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Now, we are continuing on with the Poppy Playtime uh, explanation video. I am here back once again, Gamer Salt, to explain chapter two, its story and explanation. I know what's going on in the Poppy Playtime universe. So, how did I find Now, ever since I reacted to the other two Poppy Playtime videos, I finally became really intrigued in Poppy Playtime, to say I'm not going to play it, I never will. <laughs> I'm not into horror games playing them alone. I have to have someone with me whenever I play a horror game. Like, if you, if you go back to the entirety of my channel, the only time I played a horror game alone was back when Finds and Freddy's Custom Night came out. That was back four, almost four years ago now. <laughs> I played that game around opening day, to give you guys some comparison. I never made another video after that. I like horror games, but I don't like playing them alone. That's why I usually get Mitch to play with me. And I tried to get him to play a uh, play time with me, but he wasn't interested. This is a conversation from a while back, just so you guys know. Um, so with that, my rant being over about Poppy Playtime and how much I now really enjoy it, we're going to go ahead and kick play on this bad boy in three, two, one. Poppy Playtime Chapter 2 is finally here which unveils a lot of information about the lore and the theories we have been speculating on for the past several months. The protagonist, accompanied by the recently freed puppy, embarks on a new mission to find a way out of the factory, swarmed by hostile life toys. However, he's obstructed by mummy long legs who forces him to play a few games before letting him go. Or will she? Hi folks, I'm R, and welcome to the video. Hello R. Make sure to send me your theories and game suggestions on Twitter, which I could cover in the next videos. This video will have spoilers. With that said, let's begin. I don't really care for spoilers on this channel. I really want to care about them. Obey the rules, or I'll tear you apart and eat your insides while you're still alive. Um, the I... unnamed protagonist continues from where he left off in chapter 1, finding Am himself in now? Puppy's room, with her glass case opened and no sign of her to be seen anywhere. The introductory text suggests that the protagonist wants to find a way out of the factory now that he has found Puppy and uncovered the twisted atrocities that took place here. Using a door which was inaccessible before, the protagonist enters a three-way corridor with a door in the middle labeled as Elliot, Elliot Ludwig, Ludwig, the founder There's... and the overseer of the Playtime Co. You are about to see the most incredible doll ever invented. The door is locked, causing the protagonist to try the other two possible ways. Finding bloodstains and splatters on different parts of the walls, it becomes clear that people were murdered brutally, whether under the hands of Huggy Wuggy, who was the main antagonist in the first chapter, Mummy Longlegs, who the protagonist will face soon enough, or any other malevolent entities embodied in the walking monstrous toys. As the protagonist continues okay. on, faint whispers guide him where he needs to go. 
on the right hand path. That, the protagonist comes across a Huggy Wuggy interactive board with a button which plays a few pre-recorded voices. When the final one makes a sinister remark of squeezing children until something before being redacted. Representing what became of Huggy Wuggy, becoming a man. That voice I can see for Huggy Wuggy from the first uh, Poppy Playtime video, and they were going back with the voices of the three main monsters you come across, the sentient ones. I think the main, I think the main important ones, you could say. Um, their voices didn't. So well, some of their voices didn't seem to match up with what I ex anticipated them to sound like. Okay, well, okay, I can expect, expect to have that kind of voice because just the way he looks, it just it matches the voice entirely. And that picture is... Yikes. ...and a homicidal <clears throat> experiment who truly hugs people until they die. Finding a red puppy-shaped key, the protagonist manages to oh, unlock puppy. Elliot Ludwig's door, which leads to his office. On his walls, he has multiple fan art drawings seemingly from children due to their grammatical and spelling errors in writing, <laughs> indicating that the company had a good relationship with children, especially as they had a project of fostering orphans and finding them suitable parents. On his desk, there lies a videotape and a note. Back to the the note tapes. reads about an experiment on a live rat labeled as Experiment 814, which was intentionally killed and placed in a gel mixture including puppy flower in hopes of reviving the rat. The note ends on a much more sinister line, suggesting that the experiment would be probably more effective on larger organisms, which could indicate that puppy flower was used in the future experiments, bringing toys such as puppy, huggy wuggy, and mummy long legs yes. to life. Inserting the VHS tape into the player, a quick documentary type video covers a short segment of Elliot Ludwig's life, who lost a family member in the 1960s, which caused him a lot of distress. Despite that, he continued on working to produce more toys, and maybe that's when he started experimenting with puppy flowers, trying to bring a dead person back to life, which explains the multiple experiments on live beings and the deviated sinister current experiments making toys come to life. That would make sense. Playtime Co. is the product of a great man by the name of Elliot Ludwig. Divorced, but a family man at heart. His sights were always set on bringing amazing toys to amazing children around the globe. Ludwig spent countless hours in the factory, working overtime relentlessly in an attempt to continuously innovate and surprise. In the 1960s, an unfortunate family death had pushed Ludwig down to his lowest. But with so much ambition, he rose back up and continued to fulfill his vision for the Playtime Co. toy factory. Ludwig could never be content leaving a project unfinished. But just how did one man come to create such an astounding empire? How did he manage to stay determined even after suffering such a tragic loss? Motivation. It all began in the fateful year of 19... It's it clear that Elliot Ludwig wanted to bring back to life the beloved member of his family he lost in 1960s, leading to him to go insane and experiment on innocent humans, taking their lives and freedom. Going through a vent, the protagonist gets startled by a box dropping down, realizing that Puppy was trying to find a way out. She instructs him to power up the generator so they can head to the train, which she has the code of, so they can both escape the factory. Reaching a hallway, as Poppy is about to inform the protagonist about something, a stretchy hand emerges from the massive hall behind her, grabbing her Grabs and her pulling mommy her long in, legs. interrupting her from saying what she wanted to disclose with Listen, the protagonist. I'm going to need you to trust me. Damn. Jumping Hi, through Bobby. the hole and following Puppy, the protagonist comes out of a hole, realizing it was an enormous slide. The slide is labeled as Elliot Ludwig, with a few more holes labeled as Stella Graber, Leith Pierre, and Eddie MNR. 
As heading to the game station, the protagonist gets stopped by Mummy Longlegs, keeping Puppy hostage with her mouth being forced shut with some sort of spider web, with Mummy Longlegs informing the protagonist that he should play one of her games if he wants to survive and avoid being torn apart and have his insides eaten, instead of just Damn. being given the code to the train what so is easily problem by Puppy. With humans. Oh, she just takes the red glove. So, uh, isn't this exciting, Mommy? Very exciting, Mommy. Mommy heard that Miss Poppy was going to just give you the train code to escape. Now, how is that fun? Instead, why don't we make a game out of it? The game station is still working. It will be just like old times. And if you win all three games, I'll give you the train code. <gasps> Mommy loves that idea, Poppy. Oh, you're going to have so much fun. Head to Musical Memory and Mommy will get things started. Obey the rules or I'll tear you apart and eat your insides while you're still Alive. <laughs> Pulling out hey, one of the hands on the grab pack, the protagonist is only left with the blue hand. He proceeds to enter the game station say, he needs where the, the right train hand. is present. On the walls, the protagonist gets a good view of a drawing of all of the main mascots. Puppy, Huggy Wuggy, Kissy Missy, Mommy Longlegs, Bron, Boogie Butt, Bronzo Bunny, Cat Bee, Candy Cat, and PJ, Puggy Pillar. Entering I've already the game seen station. a few of these, well, some of them being already in the first video I reacted to. So I assume the later on chapters of the game, I don't know how many chapters it's going to be, probably five chapters in total. Possibly. We're going to see the rest of the cast and Huggy Wuggy return somewhere. And there are many other fan arts by kids. One showing Huggy Wuggy hugging Kissy Missy, who is a female counterpart to him, which could be suggestive of them having had a relationship. There are three underground game places called Musical Memory, Statues, and Wacky Wuggy. In order for the train to be activated, the protagonist has to play all of these games when he pulls one of the hand levers and opens the Musical Memory. A pre-recorded voice by Stella unveils that she did in fact obtain a job in the factory after her Ella. interview observed in the first chapter Ooh. through the pink videotape who is now instructing the kids what to do in the game station. Question. Is Stella... Mommy Longlegs? The experiment that became... Mommy Longlegs? Very curious about this whole thing. Experiment thing. Because it seems like a really interesting contrast for a horror movie as well. As well. Because it is a horror game. Don't get me wrong. But it would also be like a really co cool interest. For like a horror movie. Oh, I get a poppy playtime horror movie somewhere down the line. And possibly never get the Final Fantasy Freddy's movie. <laughs> I actually forgot the other day was the uh, 8th anniversary for Five Nights at Freddy's. I've been a little bit disconnected the last year, two years or so. But I'm fully caught up once again. With the entire story of Five Nights at Freddy's. I, when Finance Rates came out, I was like 13, by the way. <laughs> Hi, kids. Welcome to the game station. I'm Stella, and we've got three super duper fun games to play. These little tests show us just how crazy strong and smart you are. Follow Mommy Longlegs down the stairs, and we'll start by playing Musical Memory. See you in a bit. Going to the Musical Memory. The protagonist reaches the molding room where he finds another videotape. Watching the tape, it's a tutorial how to use the green hand, which can contain a temporary electric shock. This, of course, becomes very handy later in the game. Really? Molding a new green hand, the protagonist traverses through the vents, reaching a room with many TVs, which seems to involve another mascot called Bunzo Bunny. Bunzo Bunny. The TV room runs a game. Now I already know. Bunzo Bunny from the first video. A series of color patterns, which the player must remember. 
If any mistakes are made, Bunza the Bunny descends from the ceiling lower and lower, which seems to crush the protagonist's head with the symbols that he uses. Mummy Longlegs then appears in the distance, informing the protagonist that it's been a long time before anyone came here. Which corresponds with what Stella said at the train station, that the kids need to follow Mummy Longlegs. Oh, isn't it amazing? Mommy hasn't seen the place I've been running in years. Mommy can only imagine how excited Bunzo must be. It's been such a long time since he's been able to play, to cheer, to eat. Oh, that's the dinner bell. Good luck. Therefore, Mummy seems to have been alive even when the kids were at the playground, as shown through the image taken on yeah, 1992. She seems to be as the heyday. Seems like Mommy Longlegs seems to want to be one of the most evilish, deranged characters of Poppy Playtime to right, that I could see right now. I mean, I know Huggy Wuggy is the main protagonist of Poppy Playtime, but he doesn't speak, or at least not yet. He po might possibly speak somewhere down the line of where the rest of the game is on, but I'm just speculating right now. As a brand new person that just got introduced to Poppy Playtime's storyline, I'm just speculating and making my own theories. Successfully to managing clear. to beat the Remember the Color game, or also commonly known as Simon. Mommy in a menacing, disappointed tone gives part of the code to the train by stretching her arm unnaturally far and awaits the protagonist to play another game. Something that for some reason Mommy enjoys and seems to rely on. Mummy could easily rip the protagonist apart at any given time, able to stretch without any limits and be present at any part of the factory within seconds. But she is letting the protagonist play her games and doesn't seem to want him to escape. The protagonist traveling through the vents reaches a storage type room where the rejected toys are in. Toys oh. that have been discontinued. An example is Owen the Oven, who caused third degree burns on children, a menacing toy which could Faces be the result of, of an experiment, or just simply a quirk of the toy. Soon as Cyan videotape is found, which is a voice recorded by Rick, whose complaint about bad work environment backfired, with him being demoted to work in the island of misfit toys, as he calls it. Well, it finally happened. After years of being ignored, company actually heard all my complaints. Yep, they listened to them very carefully. This is the same guy that complained in the last video. I guess my words <clears throat> must have really inspired them to take action. Because the next day I got demoted down here to the freaking island of misfit toys! <clears throat> Why do I talk to myself? Going back to the game station, the protagonist unlocks the door to the second game called Wacka Wuggy. In the large sand pit surrounded by many holes, oh, this is a mini game with a little, of, little huggy wuggy. Mummy explains plushies. that they used to have strings attached to them, so when they would get too close to children, they'd be pulled back. But now, they don't have any more strings, insinuating that if the protagonist doesn't react quick enough, they surely will kill him. The toys in this game used to have strings attached to them, so they could be pulled back when they got too close to the children. Hmm. Have fun. After managing to get out of it alive and yeah. whack the wuggies, Mommy clearly voices So all her these toys are technically alive. <clears throat> About almost all, every toy in the factory itself is alive. I don't think the ones that are like going off onto like stores are alive, but it just seems like the ones that are part of the factory's attraction, all of them appear to be alive somehow through the experiments that were explained while that I am still trying to pick up on all, all the details on as the series goes on. Her disappointment <clears throat> that the protagonist succeeded, saying that she hoped that he would stay here forever. Nonetheless, she congratulates him and gives him another clue for the code. Oh, you did it. Hooray! Mommy is so proud of you. Yeah, 
Yeah, she's not happy. Here, mommy has another hint for you. Mummy stands behind an observation glass here, with a large amount of blood stain trickling down the wall yeah. being observable, suggesting how many people must have died here. Going deeper in the Wacky Wacky playground, the protagonist encounters Kissy Missy, who instead of showing any aggression, actually assists the protagonist by pulling the lever and opening the path for him. But before that, she gives him a disappointed and resentful look. She leaves quickly before the protagonist oh. can even get a chance That's right, to I forgot. her at a closer they distance. They said she wasn't Stumbling hostile. Stumbling upon another videotape, the protagonist observes an employee called Jack Sitka, hey, Jack. Um, I mean Marcus, who reports on an incident recorded on March 1991. <clears throat> he explains witnessing a large monster with thousand legs when he forgot his wallet and went back to the factory after hours. This of course corresponds with the poster in chapter 1 that the employee shouldn't be in the factory after certain hours. The interviewer being a higher up clearly tries to dismiss his claims and say that there's nothing but toys. This clearly shows that the company was keeping the secret of experimenting on humans and toys, so maybe it was only the children who knew the toys are alive. And of course, certain other- Yeah, I was gonna say. <clears throat> So the sign is basically just a specific warning towards the employees because they let the monsters or experiments roam the factory as they please. Sounds like some Five Nights at Freddy's stuff. This is Poppy Playtime, so it's different. They're authorized people. I'm sure, I'm sure heavy inspiration came from Five Nights at Freddy's for this horror game. I'm sure that's a thing that happened. I mean, you just don't get haunted or experimental toys at subjects seriously um but that's that, that, that's the feel i'm getting from this back to the game station the protagonist unlocks the third game called statues In this section, the TV instructs the protagonist that he needs to play a game of statues with PJ Puggy Pillar. Just after the TV instructions, Mummy appears in the distance, informing the protagonist that the children used to play here and call her Mummy, as she was the closest thing they ever had to one. As of course, they were orphans. Yeah. However, they left and possibly got adopted if not experimented on, which made Mummy very resentful and angry. She refers to the protagonist as an ex-employee, someone who deserves more than anyone to be trapped here and rot, rather than the toy such as Mummy who was experimented on. Mummy clearly seems resentful of the employees of Playtime, as they experimented on her and left her here for eternity bringing her to life, giving her consciousness, but enslaving her to work for them forever. What is strange, however, Mummy seems to recognize the protagonist, someone who doesn't seem to remember his past life and encountering Mummy. Managing to bypass PJ, Mummy becomes furious, first trying to manipulate the protagonist so that she can capture him, then she loses her composure and clearly becomes angry, showing her true nature. Yeah. Wait, is he meant to be showing something different? He just keeps playing the same scene. A note then explains who Mummy Longleg is, labeled as Experiment 1222 with a subject name Mary Payne, seemingly having been the basis for the experiment. In the note, it's written that she oh, so doesn't love her. the staff and shows hostility towards them, but acts motherly and caring with the children. They transfer her eventually to the kids section so they could condition her easily, as she wouldn't show her bad side in front of the children. 
This proves that the toys came to life with the help of human test subjects, possibly using the puppy flower amongst some other chemicals. She's labeled as experiment 1222, with Huggy Wuggy being experiment 1006, which means Huggy was created much earlier than her, which is true based on the information that Huggy was created in 1984 and Mummy was created in 1991. That's at mm. least what I thought about what the experiment number of Huggy Wuggy is, which we soon will learn to be something different. Mummy then finds the protagonist and gives him a final chance of survival, playing a game of hide and seek, giving him a 10 second head start. After some time, Mummy yeah. soon finds the protagonist, chasing after him in a horrifying manner. The protagonist finally reaches a room when mummy gets accidentally sucked into a gear system, crushing her in a gruesome manner. Eesh. Just as yeah. the upper half of her body drops off from the rest of her body, a mechanical spider-like arm pulls the upper part, as if being the spider who has been placing all the web around. Finding a tape reveals the nature of this strange unseen entity. That's the Lock prototype, right? 08502. In relation, experiment 1006, the prototype. A close call occurred this week in which he nearly breached containment. The prototype seemingly disassembled the digital alarm clock within his room and utilized the battery, along with several other components, to create a laser pointer, which he then fired into the security camera, disabling it. These actions allowed him 28.3 seconds completely unmonitored. Once function returned to the camera, the room appeared to be empty. One surveillance specialist went in to confirm his absence. However, upon opening the door, she realized that the prototype had hidden in one of the camera's blind spots. The prototype attempted to escape through the open door. However, another surveillance specialist was able to remotely relock the door, despite the other specialist still being inside. Mm. One casualty occurred. The prototype seems to possess an unprecedented level of intelligence beyond that of all other test subjects, as well as an alarming willingness to commit violence. Further suppression treatments will need to be enacted to ensure that no other experiments develop these qualities. Experiment 1170, Huggy Wuggy, remains the optimal outcome due to insufficient intelligence paired with maximum obedience. End of log. This entity is the one in fact referred to as Experiment 1006, who has shown great intelligence trying to escape and doesn't seem to shy away from showing violence. Huggy Wuggy, in fact, is Experiment 1170, despite what I used to think to be 1006, who also has high intelligence, but unlike the mechanical spider like entity, he has maximum obedience, making him to be one of the best results out of any experiments. Managing to exit the statue's playground, the protagonist finds a way to the observation room on the higher platforms above the game station. He Where's proceeds Poppy? to activate the train, helping Puppy to get out of her web strains. Did you kill her? Good. I'll board the train. We need to leave. Puppy, in a menacing way, seems content with Mummy dying, then proceeds to go down to the train. A note in the observation room, ah. titled Proctoring in the Game Station, instructs the staff of what they need to do in order to keep the children busy. However, it appears to be more sinister than just a general watchover. Each child is individually assessed each based on how they did it. on each game, with musical memory assessing their composure, memory, and pattern recognition. The Wacky Wuggy assesses their hand-eye coordination and reaction time, and finally, the statues assesses their agility, strength, and speed. The reports then need to be handed to Stella Graber for being assorted. As seen through the heyday image, the observers are in lab coats and clearly are analyzing the children for certain experiments. As the protagonist gets on the train and enters the code, Poppy reveals her true nature that she in fact doesn't want the protagonist to leave ever. 
as she oh. has been alone for a long time, with mommy being the one who locked her in the glass case, with puppy even being seemingly more manipulative and evil. I was so scared she put me back in that case, but you saved me. You are perfect, too perfect to lose. I'm sorry. I can't let you leave. Oh. I thought she would be a good guy. Like you. <laughs> Do you know how long I've been stuck in that case? Well, too long. I had so much time to think and reflect. Time to figure out exactly what I would do when free. We'll set things right. Terrible things have happened. But I know that whatever I need you to do, you're capable. The protagonist then stops the train, pulling the emergency brakes, causing the train to derail, ending up in a play care, while the protagonist slowly Ow. loses consciousness. It all seems that deaths mainly happen because of this mechanical experiment known as Experiment 1006, possibly breaking all the toys free and being intelligent enough to know that what the company is doing to the toys is pure slavery. Something much more sinister, however, seems to hide beneath and behind the closed doors. Something mm. to look forward to in Chapter 3. And now Chapter 3 is on the way. This brings us to the end of chapter 2. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to stay tuned for more videos and theories on Puppy Playtime Chapter 2 by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. Okay. Now I have Puppy Playtime Chapter 3 to look forward to in the very near future. I haven't watched the trailer yet because I wanted to avoid spoilers, to be honest. But now I'm going to go watch it. I'm going to watch it off screen, honestly. So, expect more Poppy Playtime videos in the future. I'm also going to do a few uh, game theory videos because I, when I was looking up the explanation videos, I saw he posted a few of those. And I've never done a game theory reaction video. So, start with Poppy Playtime. So, with that being said, guys, hope you enjoyed today's reaction. Please like and subscribe and all that stuff, guys. And I will see you next video. Bye.